for New York City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. So let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. real talented, but I don't know what kind of dumbbell he is behind the scenes <laughs> with regarding his love life. Ooh. Well, honey, the latest is the greatest. Listen, there is this woman who is suing Drake, claiming that he got her pregnant. Oh. Excuse me. She, oh, excuse me, he's suing her. Oh. Well, no, no, look, because this, this, woman, this woman is claiming that he got her pregnant and that she's trying to extort him and then accused him of rape. Oh. Well, before I show you her picture, <laughs> let me just say that Drake has always been very specific. He likes a gigantic behind and he likes well-appointed breasts and a very small waist in between. Might I present to you Layla Lace. Miss Lace is a mother already, but uh, Drake uh, met her apparently and you know, got it on with her, Layla, during his tour in England last year. Oh. Drake alleges that she was upset uh, because he sent her on her way the next day. And in my mind, I'm like, Drake, what part of next day don't you understand? You know, there are people that you hit and quit, like quick, I mean, it's not the 70s and God knows, you know, the STDs out here and everything like that. But you have to, if you know that somebody's only with you for a moment, then dismiss them. They, they're not to go in your mini bar. They're not, they're not ordering room service afterwards. Even women understand that. Ladies, do you understand that? Yeah. Do you understand that? And men, on account of there's so many women on tour, on tour, I know you understand it too. When we're done with you, bye. <laughs> Ugh. So Layla sent Drake tons of messages on text and Drake stopped responding. At first he was responding a little bit, but this is what this girl wanted. So they wake up in the morning and she's like, so what are we doing today? <laughs> and he's like, um, my tour is continuing. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, um, bye. <laughs> and so she got it all messed up. She figured, you know, a night with, night with Drake is supposed to be, you know, on tour and around the world. This is what this Instagram has got everything so twisted. <laughs> it's got everything so twisted. It makes everybody think that there's certain lifestyles that are being led that they really aren't. Layla, you were a hit and quit. So apparently soon after when Drake stopped responding to her, she went on Instagram and said she was pregnant. Oh. See, she didn't do that right away. <laughs> then she went on my friend Jazzy Bell's radio show on XM and continued to lie as far as I'm concerned. Go. How sure are you that you're pregnant by Drake? <laughs> 
and not somebody else. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and I'm going to just make this clear. I know who I sleep with unprotected. Period. Mm. So, it's 100% sure. He knows it. So, at the end of the day, I'm going to just leave it at that. Drake, the whole world is laughing at you. And girl, nobody believes you. And a few people in my Hot Topics meeting this morning were like, well, why would Drake even get with a girl like that? And you know, some of the sensitive, uh, sensible ones, including me, said, well, why not? You know, it's late in the night. You know, he's feeling a ways. Maybe he wants to be topped off. <laughs> and, and so, and this girl is standing there. It's not like you have to look at her or know her name. Obviously, he doesn't use condoms. We've heard that before from the French lady who has his baby who he doesn't see. Uh-huh. French lady, you've got nothing on the, the behind of that new one, though. <laughs> Like, oh my God. <laughs> so Drake is, is saying, yeah, I got you pregnant. Well, I'm asking for a paternity test. Then she went silent. Then she went silent. But she didn't stop. Then she called the cops. Okay, no, check. Then she called the cops and told them Drake raped her. Oh. Drake, how many times does Belle Biv DeVoe have to say it? You can't. <laughs> right. <laughs> that girl is poison. Drake is still living his best life though. You know he comes from Dorcas Means. He was the kid in the wheelchair on Degrassi High. <laughs> those kids were, in my mind, those kids were all raised kind of like Disney kids, you know, sequestered in Canada and not really knowing much about the world. Then all of a sudden he gets a hit and he's surrounded by black people. <laughs> and he's in, and he, then he's in New York and he's like, um, okay, whiff. But I, I, I grew up saying whiff, but okay, whiff. Okay, I'll say whiff, whiff. Who are you with? <laughs> okay, instead of who are you with? With. Drake, interv uh, Drake was interviewed by the cops and he was cleared. Drake is suing this girl and I think that she should be sued. Uh, uh, she <laughs> you know, it's not even about money. It's about, it's about the shameful thing that she's trying to do and you know, it's really easy to put certain people in a certain light and you just can't walk around doing this. So girl, we are watching this story and Drake, good luck with your case and you need to start wearing condoms with everyone. <laughs> So you know that Hollywood director, Glenn Weiss, um, who uh, became the overnight celebrity after the big proposal at the Emmys, which the ratings were down by 10%, so I don't know who watched. <laughs> I wasn't watching. And ironically, I was back in, like I, the one time I did change to them, that's what I saw right here. I'm like, what the cornball is going on? <laughs> what is going on? What is happening? This is not happening at the Emmys. I mean, it's happened a couple of times here at Wendy. I don't even like it then, like I play along. But those public proposals to me are so cool. We just had one like towards the end of last season. I actually lost a tear. <laughs> Only because I'm like, is this what it's come to? <laughs> you know, um, I don't like public proposals. I think that's something very personal. And when you do it on a grand stage, then you're stuck, then you're forced to be together forever. I, I will never accept Glenn and his uh, woman divorcing, ever, ever. You wanna do this on the Emmys? All right, then you ride out. <laughs> ride out. So apparently, I'm not the only one disgusted by this public display. <laughs> good, 
Look, I've been consistent all 10 years that I've known you, plus the years in radio. I've always said I do not like a public display, so I'm consistent. So this guy, Glenn, has two daughters, a 17-year-old and a 21-year-old, and they were at home watching the Emmys. And that's how they found out they were about to have a stepmom. Selfish Glenn. <laughs> they felt completely left out, completely blindsided. I would too. Now there were some people in our Hot Topics morning me meeting who were saying, well, the girls 17 and 21, that's, that's grown. You know, your parents are allowed to go on and live their own lives after you all are grown. I said, no, even if you're 35 and your parent is 85, if they're getting engaged, put me down before you lay down. Like what is going on? What is going on? At the very least, we need to know how many ways we're splitting the money <laughs> upon Glenn's demise. So, um, I just, um, good luck, um, Glenn and um, Jan. <laughs> and now, you better get married, you better follow through with this, and you better never get a divorce. Or else we're all gonna say, Mm -hmm. <laughs> My people. <laughs> All right. So I'm at home doing stuff, watching the chew. I mean, no, no, rest in peace, the chew. Oh, I mean, watching the talk because I want to see the Julie Chen uh, message video that she sent, and they made us wait for 58 minutes like all the way till the end of the show. So anyway, so here's her video message. Take a look. I have been at the talk since the day it started nine years ago. And the cast, crew, and staff have become family to me over the years. But right now, I need to spend more time at home with my husband and our young son. So I've decided to leave the talk. I want to thank everyone at the show for the wonderful years together. I will always, always cherish the memories we shared. I send you my love. I will miss you all very, very much. It's nice to know she watches Hot Topics. <laughs> Where I said she should quit, she'd be a distraction. So she ended up crying towards the end, but in my mind, those weren't tears because of the, of the crew. Rambo, Julie Chan doesn't care about you. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't care about you, but I do. Oh, do you know what I mean? Rambo's been with me for 10 years, and at least 100 pounds between the two of us we've lost and kept it off. <laughs> Good for us, Rambo. Uh, in my opinion, she wasn't crying because of the cast and the crew and the staff and stuff, wah, wah, wah. She was crying because now she has to go back to that compound and deal with that man and try to keep her son uh, you know, out of it. And there is no compound to me that's big enough. I don't care if they have a 28 you know, square foot mansion. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I think I'd stay in the hotel. I would stay in the hotel I would bring my son to the hotel, although that would make him feel weird. Oh no, I have to stay at home so everything feels normal. Damn it, Les. <laughs> you messed this up for all of us. <laughs> and by the way, one of the most distracting things to me was that uh, they had uh, Carrie Ann Anaba in the Julie Chan seat. And then Julie Chan shouted out to Carrie Ann in her, in her um, overture saying her Asian sister. Well, I'm not Asian, but uh, for a moment I was. <laughs> for a moment I was thinking, now why do you think you have to replace her with Carrie Ann Inaba, who's qualified to judge on Dancing with the Stars, but she's not a qualified talk show host or panelist. I mean, what was the purpose of her being there? You, it's not necessary to replace an Asian with another Asian. Like, you don't have to call up Lucy Liu or Margaret Cho. <laughs> Or Sandra O. Oh. You don't have to, like, you don't have to do that. Yeah. 
If they get rid of Cheryl Underwood, you don't have to call up another black person. You call up a qualified person. Besides, Eve has got it locked down for the blacks. Now, if you got rid of Cheryl Underwood and Eve at the same time, then maybe you need a black person. But all in all, I don't know what will become of this show. You know what I think? I think that she might have had Carrie Ann Inaba in her seat because she knows Carrie Ann Inaba is not qualified to be a talk show host, thus spelling the demise. Y yes, yes. Like if I can't be there, let them be canceled. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So she's gonna continue on Big Brother and that doesn't bother me because Big Brother has nothing to do with her other than reading a, a teleprompter of exactly what she's supposed to say and the stars of the show are the people in the house. I'm not mad at Big Brother. There were people in our Hot Topics morning meeting that are mad at Big Brother. Norman was one of them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, yes, you said I, okay. she needs I'm to go. Say, I'm gonna stand in my truth. Okay. I did say this. Like if she is like uh, standing and supporting someone who's pretty much in my mind Convicted a in my mind of sexual assault, if she's supporting this, then I don't want to see her on TV. I don't really much care because you know how many creeps and weirdos you look at on TV every day and they have not been discovered yet for the creepiness and weirdoness. Believe me, you. Believe me, you. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, so Kanye is moving back home to Chicago. Well, he made this big overture on Monday um, that he wanted to move back to <laughs> Sorry. That he wanted to move back to Chicago permanently. And he says this on the stage in front of everybody in Chicago. So now everybody in Chicago is gonna expect him to be moving back home permanently. He's also moving his Yeezy offices, he says, from, um, from Calabasas to Chicago. Plus, he's gonna set up, you know, some grandiose recording studio. He's moving his life to Chicago. But, you know, that's easy to say, Shy. Don't get too hopped up on Kanye actually being there more than 10 days a year. I'll tell you why. And he's a man of means. They own a whole bunch of uh, different properties. And, you know, you know, when you're a Kanye West, you're always out in LA, you're always in Paris, you're always in, you know, Istanbul, you're, you're always doing something. So he's not really going to be in Chicago, so that's easy for him to say, but a nice overture. I can't, look. Uh, I mean, he's lied to us before. He said he was teaching an art class. He's not teaching an art class. He also said that Kim was in law school. Now, honey, so don't get too excited, Chicago. Just know that he's still, you know, from Chicago and by him being there, maybe that'll increase something there in Chicago, but he's not gonna be there on a full-time basis, mark my words. And I don't picture Kim in Chicago. What is this, the Miracle Mile? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so much better in Beverly Hills. Kanye, do I have to get out? I don't even have a coat. Do I have a coat? Come on, North. Come on, Chicago. This is your city. Come on! This is your city. <laughs> How many women in uh, my audience, my co hosts, are wearing shapewear? Clap. Okay. Is that a bad word to say? Because I suspect at least twice as many. But you know that I, I've never been part of the shapewear movement. I just find it to be tragically confining. And the one time that I did try, this is years ago when they first started, the one time I did try, what I found is that it was easier just to let myself go under the shapewear, <laughs> you know? So I felt fatter with the shapewear <laughs> than just working my own stomach muscles and, and my own muscles and just do it myself. Plus the smell. <laughs> And when you have to go to the bathroom, what do you do? And then when you're on a date, he's gotta peel all of that off. Nothing, nothing is spontaneous. But you do what you wanna do, girls. I'm just gonna tell you this. I don't subscribe, but this female blogger um, got a pair of shapewear and it's gone viral. Millions have seen it. Just take a look at her. 
just pull off of my breath. Oh, I ripped it. Oh, that's not funny. for our children. It was only supposed to be a skirt shape where it ended up being way up here. I love this show. We've got more for you today. Turn it up. More, more. Up next, musical superstar Macy Gray is here. So grab a snack and come on back.